so much choir. Quickly turn your Bibles to the book of John, John chapter 20. We're going to look at 18 Bible verses here. Right before this service starts, the 830 service, I had both kids with me. And before the service started, Sherry told me this, and I had some control problems with children. She pulls me aside and said, you know, I've been voted to the nursery because you couldn't watch your children. I was thinking, you know, next Sunday, or not next Sunday, next year, I'm going to have three children, so Derek, I'll be joining that choir in Elizabeth. <laughs> Sherry can watch Daniel, Elizabeth, and baby number three, unknown name, baby number three, on the front pew up there. So, uh, you know, we're going to look at the story here about Mary Magdalene, how she was a little confused. And yesterday, I was a little confused. When you have little children, little people at home, you get confused with reality. I came up here, and it's an Easter egg hunt. And a lot of the guys, Herbert and Clay, were out there putting out Easter eggs. And I walk up. They were telling me they ate some biscuits and gravy and uh, sausage. They were telling me what they ate for breakfast. And I said, guys, I ate empty two biscuits. And uh, that was where Sherry had cooked these for the kids. It's a biscuit that's hollow on the inside, so it looks like an empty tomb. And they busted out laughing. I thought, oh, goodness, man, I've really lost touch. They didn't think it was funny. They thought, gosh, dude, you really turned you really change your works, but hitting empty tomb biscuits with that. So that is, anyway, that would be a single laugh. But John chapter 20, verse 1. This here is the empty tomb, so it doesn't have anything to do with empty tomb biscuits, but they can make those. So that's uh, the first day of the week. Mary Magdalene. Who is Mary Magdalene? Mary Magdalene is mentioned in Scripture in Luke chapter 8, verse 2. Mary Magdalene had seven demons that Jesus Christ delivered her from. She was someone who was uh, met, who was probably, in you know, seven in the Bible is a word for completion, so that means a full. That means she probably had some serious problems when Jesus set her free. She was someone that had uh, issues, and she was healed of her evil spirits, of her seven demons, and here she is in Scripture at the empty tomb. First day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early. The Bible was still dark. She saw that the tomb had been removed from the, the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran to Simon Peter, the other <coughs> disciple, the one Jesus loved, who's John, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. At that, Peter and the other disciple went out heading for the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and got to the tomb first. John was a faster runner than Peter. Peter started out, but John caught up with him and passed him to the tomb. So we know John can run faster than Peter from the Bible. Verse 5, stooping down, he saw the linen cloth lying there, yet he did not go in. Then following him, Simon Peter came also. He entered the tomb and saw the linen cloth lying there. You know, even though John outran Peter, it was Peter who went in the tomb first. So, you know, that's good. Your name's John or Peter. You know, you can think, well, hey, even though I got outran in the tomb, I went in first. Verse 7, the wrapping that had been on his head was not lined with the linen cloths, but was folded up in a separate place by itself. You know, you think about Jesus, if he was a grave robber that stole his body. Would someone break into your home and then fold your clothes on the way there? Because it said literally the linen cloths were folded there. So we know these were, this was something that had to be completely of God that went in there and Jesus was resurrected <coughs> Angel of Jesus folded up his laundry and put it back in place. You know, obviously someone would come steal a body and fold up the grave clothes and put it back together. And that's where we get folding. How important is to fold your clothes in the Bible? The other side, we reached the tomb first, then there the tomb, and saw and believed. For they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went home again. So we see here John and Peter, how they first got there, and the tomb was empty. Now look what happens here with Mary Magdalene. Here's the main point we want to get, because I think a lot of us this morning here on Easter can identify her. But Mary stood outside, facing the tomb, crying, and she was crying. She stooped to look into the tomb. She saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where Jesus' body had been lying. They said to her, woman, why are you crying? Because they've taken away my Lord, she told them, and I don't know where they've put him. The irony, what's crazy about this is Mary is crying and talking to an angel and answering their questions. Two angels. It's like Mary is just is completely confused. She doesn't understand the fact that you're talking to answering angels' questions. Something should be up, Mary, with this. 
And then look what happens after that. Verse 14, having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. Though she did not know it was Jesus, now she sees Jesus and doesn't recognize him. Woman, he says to her, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Supposing he was the gardener. Jesus was not confused with being the gardener. She, re she replies, sir, if you've removed him, tell me where you put him, and I will take him away. And then Jesus said, Mary, turning around, she said to him in Hebrew, Rabbanon, which means teacher, don't cling to me, Jesus told her, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending, my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went in and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them what he had said to her. We see here this story about Mary Magdalene, a young lady that had been delivered of seven demons a couple of years earlier in Jesus' ministry. One that came to the empty tomb, came to expecting to see, not an empty tomb, but expecting to find a body, lay some flowers at the grave, to pay her respects to Jesus. The Sabbath was now over. And Mary was blinded on the first Easter. She was there talking to two angels. And not only that, church, she was actually looking at Jesus and she did not realize what was going on. Mary believed the problem were actually, they were actually, she said, they've taken him away. She thought the problem was thieves, that people had come and stolen away his body. She had totally missed, totally forgotten what would happen. Mary just needed to be reminded, it says, Mary, who cured you of your seven demons two years ago? Who set you free of your addiction problems? Who saved you from hell? Mary? Who, who, who was the one that you had, you had demon possession and now you've been set free? And she was thinking the problem were some grave robbers who folded the laundry and left it nice and neat for them. And what happens here with Easter with us? Sometimes we come into church or Easter and we're blinded. We completely miss what the Lord is doing. Mary's talking to angels. She's looking at Jesus, and she doesn't even realize it. Secondly, see here, Mary did not have a large enough view of Jesus. Finally, Jesus said to her, when she didn't realize, he says, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? What more do you need, Mary? It was almost as if what had happened in her life was not sufficient enough. Do you know the grave, it did not hold Jesus beyond the appointed time. Third day he rose again. And not only that, it should not hold you beyond your appointed time. Some of you are living like Mary, going about your days, and you forget, and Jesus is asking the question, you know, who are you looking for? What's going on? Did you forget that I set you free? Did you forget when you were 15, I delivered and saved you from hell. I set you free from seven demons. She had forgotten her view of God became small instead of a huge, empty tomb Jesus. And thirdly, we see here that Mary clung to Jesus, her rabbana, which means teacher. Jesus is a teacher. The Bible, our best teacher is the Bible. And not only that, Jesus, that's one of his names. Mary had forgotten about her teacher. In John 16, 16, he told all the people, says, I'm dying. I'm going away, but I will be back again. I promise you'll see me return. And she forgot his words. When you forget Jesus' words, when you lose focus of him being your teacher, what's most important in your life with the empty tomb, this is the foundation of Christianity, the empty tomb. What happens is we go and we're looking for empty graves. We go and we blame the problem on thieves. We think that's the problem here. When the problem is Mary, Mary forgot she was talking about God. In closing, I want to tell a story. I want to share what this would be like. Let's say, for example, it's a fictional story. I don't have a brother, so we'll pretend I had a brother. His name's Jim. I had a brother named Jim, and I had been to a ball game, or I had been hanging out with him one morning, and then he was going to a ball game with his other friend. And I knew about that, he was excited about the game, baseball season started this week, so he 
We went to a baseball game. But in the afternoon, I hadn't spoke to Jim in a while at the game, so I just knew he was there. But that afternoon, late afternoon, there was a knock at the door. And I opened the door. I had no idea who it was. And I recognized that the person at the door was the Jim's friend that he went to the ball game with. And he came in the door and he says, Daniel, I have some awful news. I am so sorry. I, I can't believe it happened. We were at the game, Daniel, and we were leaving the ball game. And we were on the sidewalk and we were walking our car. And the car swerved and jumped the curb and it hit Jim. And I stayed with him. The paramedics came. I was with him the entire time. Dan, I'm sorry he didn't make it. I'm so sorry. Jim's dead. And I was there. And we're standing in my front door. And he's crying and I'm crying. And I'm in total shock. I just found out my brother died. And I had just been with him. I said, no, you know, I just was with him this morning. I just spoken to him a few hours ago. He was excited about the ball game. And my friend doesn't know what to tell me at the front door. I don't know what to say. And we're just there, crying, weeping. My brother's dead. Just speechless. Hor horrifying event to happen. Nothing worse could happen. I guess it's a you done Finding out that the person, that someone who's real, very close to you, dies unexpectedly. And as we're standing there, we're just speechless, nothing to say. All of a sudden, there's another knock at the door. And I open the door, and there's this other man, who I recognize the man. He's one of my other friends. And he says with a loud voice, says, Daniel, I don't know what on earth just happened. I know he was dead, but now he's alive. Jim's alive. I can't explain it, but I know I, was, I know the coroner pronounced him dead, and we were starting playing the funeral, but you can go talk to him. He's back in his house. And we're standing there, and I was crying because of the first knock. And then the second knock, literally, my life went from just absolute despair to the door knocked again, and we have no explanation for it. But Jim's alive. Church, that's what happened on Easter morning. Mary shows up, and Peter and John, they were bringing flowers for the grave. They were ready to, in sadness and horror. Jesus died, a young man, 33 years old, my age. And now, he's alive. This morning, we need to be living our lives. You need to be examining our lives if we're stuck living and thinking about a dead Jesus with great clothes on, making excuses for where he's at. They stole his body. Jesus can't do this. He's not big enough. We have a God that the first knock came, and it was horrible news. Three days later, the second knock came, church. And we don't know how it happened. We can't explain it. But all we say is Jesus is alive. He came back from the dead. If you are living your life on that first knock with a dead Jesus, this morning, I want to challenge you. This morning at the early service, you know, we didn't have anybody respond to the invitation, but someone at the door is going out the door and says, Daniel, I need to get saved. I've been following a dead Jesus. I've been like Mary, just going around moping. When we have an empty tomb, Jesus. Let's bow our heads and pray. Jesus, we thank you for the empty tomb. God, if there's anyone here that needs to get saved this morning, if they don't have the boldness and courage to make it public and front of everybody, I pray they'll come and talk to me or Derek or Eric. And let their decision be public and let be known today. Lord, you gave two knocks. The first knock was hard. The second knock, we can't explain it, but you're alive. There's an empty tomb. And Lord, if there's, no, if there's some people here that have never been saved, I pray during our invitation we have. As we, we looked at your word, we've heard the word through song, I pray that we will give our lives to you because you conquered death. 
even when the corner said he's dead. And the centurion looked at him and shoved his spear beside him. And he had been hanging dead on a cross, put him in a tomb, sealed shut. Sunday morning, there were angels, there was folded laundry, and there was no Jesus in the tomb. God, I thank you for Mary Magdalene. And she says the example that some of us just struggle. We forget what you've done in our life. Maybe we've been delivered from seven demons like she was. Lord, we 